and this is Bob Fun. And here's a little fun fact about Bob. He's two-dimensional, so he doesn't have vocal cords. Doesn't have room for him. Poor Bob has to speak through speech bubbles. Now Bob, that's no way to act when we have company. So why don't you say hi? That's better. Say, where'd you park? I know what'll make you happy. Why don't you show the people watching your new truck? That's a nice truck. Okay, Bob, let's do an experiment. Let's find out how much average force your truck can produce. Since force equals m times a, we're gonna need an acceleration. How fast do you get to 60 miles an hour from zero? Okay, so we can figure out an acceleration. Since a is delta v over time, or change in velocity over time, we take our final mile per hour, subtract that from our initial mile per hour, and we'll end up with 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour is roughly 96 kilometers an hour, and that's 96,000 meters. And since there's 3,600 seconds in an hour, that's 96,000 meters every 3,600 seconds. Now let's make that 26.7 meters per second. We divide that by your eight second time, we get 3.34 meters a second. Now since force equals mass times acceleration, we need the mass of the truck. Good, sounds about right. So let's take 9,390 times the acceleration we figured out earlier, which is 3.34, and we'll get a force of 31,339 newtons. Now what this means is, if the force efficient exceeds that number, then you won't be able to pull it. So if I made a block with the friction coefficient of 0.2, and it weighs 15,700 kilograms. There's no way you can pull it, Bob. Okay, but I bet you can't. Let's chain you up. Now accelerate. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll delete this. All right. I heard there's construction. You're not planning to take this rig up the mountain, are you? Oh, that's a nice sign. Now hold on, let's see how much trouble you're in. I'm guessing you're on a 30 degree slope. Now we take the mass, which was 9,390, and we add the trailer's mass, which is probably 4,300 kilograms, and we'll get a net mass of 13,690 kilograms. Now the force perpendicular equals the force of gravity. Now the force of gravity is Fg times the cosine of the degree. 
Now fg is mass times acceleration. So we'll take our mass, times it by 10, times that by the cosine of 30 degrees, which is 0.866, and we'll get a force perpendicular of 118,555.4 newtons. But we're going to divide that by 4 since you have 4 axles, and we're going to look at that number because you only have 1 axle holding the truck back. So the force perpendicular divided by 4 equals 27,140. Now the force parallel, or the force applied, is Fg times the sine of the degree. Now Fg is 136,900. Now we're going to times that by the sine of 30 degrees, which is 0.5, and we get an applied force of 68,450. Now the force of friction is mu times the force perpendicular. Now I got the chance to test your tires earlier, and they came out to be a mu of 2.5 on this road, which is an exceptionally good pair of tires. Now we take that coefficient, 2.5, times the force parallel, which is 27,140, and we get a force of friction of 68,392. Now that's really close to the force applied, so we're going to have a net force of negative 57. What this means is if you slip tire and change your friction coefficient, or if your mass changes to the slightest bit, well, you're going downhill. Now uh, it's just an owl. Wait. In the daytime? Well, Bob, looks like it's your lucky day.